everybody, it is Heather Cox, your roving reporter. I am here at Hopewell Middle School with Mark Poole. Mark is going to show us an incredibly amazing space today and tell us a little bit about how he personalizes learning in this space. So, Mark, nice to see you today. Nice to see you, Heather. All right, now Mark, give us a, a little history of your teaching. How long have you been teaching here in Fulton County? I've been teaching for, this is my 12th year at Fulton County, and I've been teaching all of those 12 years here at Hopewell. I'm de facto the mayor of Hopewell because I'm <laughs> one of the few people that have been here the entire time. Okay, and what do you teach here at Hopewell? I teach, uh, effectively I teach high school math to 7th uh, and 8th graders. Which is or interesting. Or 5th graders if they need it. Okay, and we're going to talk about that, how he's teaching high school math to the 7th and 8th graders. Now, we're sitting in a very unique space. This is what's called, well, a little lecture room, correct? Right, this is the what we call the lecture hall. It's uh, much like you would see in a college uh, mm -hmm. uh, facility. It's, a, it's much smaller, of course, but it's a lecture hall, which we use primarily for direct instruction, or uh, if you wanted to show a video or something, you would come in here um, and show it. It's very, what goes on in here, it's very difficult to hear once you get outside of here. The, the, glass you can see outside, but the glass is uh, fairly thick and it uh, doesn't let the sound out very well. And that's perfect for somebody like me, and you said yourself you're loud, so yes. it would be perfect for somebody like me since I'm quite loud when I speak. Um, and we're going to take a tour so you can just see exactly what we're talking about, but uh, describe a little bit outside of the lecture hall, what is the space like that's on either side of us right now? Well, the space on either side is broken up into three different, we'll call them classrooms. They're uh, classrooms on either end there is no wall okay. and then you can walk freely up and down between the three the three spaces and then on the end over to my left on the end over here there's a science lab and um, over on the other side there's another lecture hall on the other okay. side of this what we call the seventh grade spaces there's a uh, there's another lecture hall and then there's a uh, room that is designed as an art room okay now, how it, this is a very unique space, and I'm sure that this is, you know, takes some getting used to, to teaching in this space, but how does it help to personalize learning? Well, it, it works great for, for me because what I've done this year is I have taken the math curriculum for the four subjects I teach and effectively created a flipped classroom model okay. where the kids get their instruction through videos outside of class, or sometimes in class if they, they're unable to get them outside of class, and then they do their work in class and they take formative assessments and summative assessments when they feel like they're ready to do that. And then I work on keeping the kids on pace and getting things graded, especially the formatives, as fast as I can so the students can, uh, can get what they need from the formative assessment and that is information on how well they're doing relative to the standard. And I, and I do all my formative and summative assessing by standard. Okay, now you mentioned a word in there that is part of one of our seven principles of personalized learning in Fulton County. You said pace, so we talk about flexible pacing. And I know flexible pacing is a concept that a lot of teachers seem to be having trouble wrapping their heads around. How does flexible pacing work for you? How do you set that up? How do you manage that? Um, when you have all these different kids at different different places? Well, what I do is uh, my, my space, I've set it up, uh, I, we use this space, or I use this space, or the, actually the students use this space when they want to collaborate with each other, when they want to talk like we're talking, mm -hmm. where they won't inter interrupt anybody else. There's also a conference room, a small conference room, uh, right behind us that my kids will use if they want to work together uh, collaboratively. And then in my open space, I have kids on any given day taking summative assessments and formative assessments. The first thing I do is I set kids up. I ask kids, who needs a summative today? And then I get them and, and they sit, they get their screen and they're, they put their earbuds in, they go off and they're in their own world. And when they done with that, they turn that in and they move on. Um, I set up my, my pacing uh, using a Google Doc uh, and with a, well, a Google Calendar mm -hmm. that's embedded in a Weebly so the kids can uh, access that from any device that they have so they can see where they should be on pace. Now if they get behind, if they get ahead, that's neither good nor bad. 
on their four and a half week progress reports, I type a note for every student mm -hmm. to let the parents know exactly where they are relative to pace. They're okay. either five days behind pace, two days ahead of pace, so that they can see. And, and one of the things, the reasons I wanted to do this was at our grade level meetings, we were having to meet to decide, okay, who's going to give an assessment on, on a given day uh, okay. so the kids don't have 15 um, different you know, assessments in every classroom. So people were having to pick days. Well, now I'm not picking that day. The kids are picking that day. So if they have a, a, a language arts exam, a test and a science test on Friday, and they were planning on taking the LE5 summative on Friday, well, they can either get it done a little sooner, maybe take it Thursday, or wait until Monday. So I'm giving the kids the flexibility and, and hopefully the maturity to make those decisions. Yeah, that's great with the student ownership. That's a huge piece, student co-planning, learning. That's really kind of what they're doing. Yeah. They're making those decisions for themselves. Um, the other thing that you mentioned is that everything that you assess on is directly related to the standards. Yes. So that they are taking it and it's specifically standards-based. Talk, talk a little bit about that and how you, you create those assessments. Okay, um, I take the standard and I, I look at it and I interpret it either using the, the state resources, the county resources, I interpret what the meaning of the standard is and then I develop formative and summative assessments for each standard. Mm -hmm. uh, the formative assessments are graded on a four point scale. Uh, one being they need a whole lot of extra support, two, a little bit of support, Three means they're meeting the standard and four effectively means they're mastering the mm -hmm. standard. So the kids get that. That grade is just what it's designed to do and that's to inform kids how well they're doing relative to the standard. It doesn't, it, it goes into the grade book, it goes into TAC as a one, two, three, or four, but it has a zero weight. 100% oh. of their grade is based on their summative assessments, which are still based on a 100 point scale. Um, and then students are allowed to reassess anytime I give them I give them two weeks mm -hmm. from the time that I hand back the assessment I don't hand back all of the assessments until uh, all of the students in that particular course have taken the assessment Makes that's sense. that's when <laughs> that's when the two weeks officially starts okay. but if kids want to see their assessment before that, they can come in before school. Like today, I had all my tables filled. I had kids taking formative assessments, some kids looking at their summative assessments to uh, rework the problems. Step one of the reassessment process is for them to go back through their test, mm -hmm. understand what they missed, why they missed it, and rework the problems. Then they, then they turn that into me, I check that off. They show me that they've completed all of their work. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I don't take a homework grade we don't look in the grade book to see if you've completed all of your homework, but you have had to you had to complete all of the work that's been assigned. If you've done that, I initial that, and then I give you a give the student a remediation uh, activity or problems to to do that will help them go back and understand what they missed. Once they do that, they come, they turn that in, and then they can sit for this their uh, reassessment. They come in before school, they take the reassessment, and then I take the higher of the two grades. What I really like about the way that you set that up with the formative assessments is that because they're doing them when they need to do them, you can then offer that just-in-time direct instruction because you know right then and there what it is they need to know and what they need to learn. So um, the one other thing before we take a tour that I wanted to talk about, since we are both Vanguard members, <laughs> is instructional technology because we know that that is while it's not all personalized learning it is a piece of personalized learning mm -hmm. what are some ways that you use technology in order to help you meet the needs of your students well i personally use technology in a couple ways i mentioned the uh the google calendar yep. uh the google calendar uh has all the all the stuff that the kids need it has all the documents has all the videos uh, and they can link directly to the video. Um, it's so nice for the one-stop shop. Yes, it's, there. It's, Plus the parents can see it. Yeah, too. and the parents can see it. Nobody needs access uh, or nobody needs a code or anything. That's great. I used to use Edmodo, but what I was finding it was difficult to, if they forgot their code or a parent yeah, wanted to get it, they, they couldn't find it. Yeah, so this is mm -hmm. much more transparent. Kids are able to see that. And then I, I freely admit that I use video, I use aftermarket videos when possible because it uh, it'll take it can take me a couple hours to 
put a video from beginning to end to get one video into production for the kid. And I don't mind doing that, but if I, if I, you know, I watch all the videos that I use, and if, and if that information is applicable, then hey, go yeah. for it. And my kids are, are used to that. Um, so uh, I, I, but when I do videos, uh, I use Camtasia, mm -hmm. and I do my own video editing there. So that's kind of how I use technology. Now the kids use technology, the kids, my, my classroom is a BYOD, uh, effectively, you're allowed to be on your device pretty much any time. Um, and I also have, I've written several grants for, over the past two years. I have, now I have three iPad minis, uh, and I'll show you my iPad box, um, that the kids can use, those kids that perhaps weren't able to watch a video at home, something went wrong, or they got home late, and they needed to watch it in class. I don't have any computers, but I do have the uh, iPads in the class. So, so the basically, kids can do that. even if they don't have devices, they're, they're not losing out in any way. No, so they're there's not. No, there's no problem with access. They're, they're not. They're, they're, yes, is it, is it ideal in a flipped classroom environment to not have access outside of school? No, it isn't. But can you get by? Sure. Absolutely. Because I'm here, you know, four days, four mornings a week, kids are coming in at 7.45, and, and they come in and they get what they need. Absolutely. Now what we're gonna do in just a second is we're gonna take a little tour. We'll walk around the space and have Mark show us some of the ways that it, the space can be used. Um, it's, it's an incredible place for kids to learn in. Um, mm -hmm. I wish that something like this had existed when I was in school. I just was always in the traditional classroom. But this is a great thing that Fulton County is doing and, and I think you'll be impressed to see what it is. You wanna stop it? We are now here in Mark's and instructional space. Um, but before we start talking about this space, I have a, I have a question for you. Now, this is an interesting setup, as I've mentioned before, mm -hmm. and I can't imagine this is what you've always taught in. No. So how, um, how does this change, and how, how have we gotten to this point to be ready to teach in a space like this? Well, it's interesting, to be honest with you, we really had no idea that, that these kind of spaces were coming. <laughs> When we thought, we thought, oh, we're gonna get more classrooms, traditional classrooms. So I wasn't even in this space at the beginning of the year. I, I started what I was doing in my old classroom, which was actually four cinder block walls. You had to put stuff on the wall this with, is a, very different with a nail. Four cinder yeah, block you walls. Could, you could, yeah, you couldn't put anything into the wall. So I had started that, and the teacher that was in here was having struggles because she's a language arts teacher, and the guy next to her is a language arts teacher, and their, their classes, Seem to conflict. Or okay. There, there were some. There were some issues. So she asked if I wanted to, to switch out, and so I did. And because I thought, hey, I'm doing this self-paced thing. I think it will lend itself very nicely to this to this space, and it has worked out very. Well. So it, it, it allowed. It, I came here with the intention of making this work, and it and to me it has worked out great. My students. The only thing my students really feared when they came here was the fact that when we first came over here, there was no Wi-Fi. Ah, so, <laughs> well, I think I might have feared yeah. that myself. So when I had them all in the, in the uh, when I did my test week, I got them all together afterwards and they said, you know, I said, hey, could, if we can do this, would you like to stay here? And they said, oh, yes, but what about Wi-Fi? I said, well, if I could fix the Wi-Fi, and so, what I did was I got a router and, and hooked up to a blue cord, a router temporarily, so at least my kids had Wi-Fi in here while they were- I bet they genuinely they were, appreciated they, that. They genuinely appreciated <laughs> that. And then we got the Wi-Fi, uh, the school Wi-Fi, so it worked out. Now really you well. have brought over a dry erase marker. Tell us why you have that dry erase well, I have marker. this, um, our tables, the tables in here, they're set up in rounds right now, but they actually, the tables, will come apart Love it. and you can you can so you could set them up in um, in twos or threes if you wanted to mm -hmm. you know I haven't set up in fours but the tabletop is actually dry erase so you can the kids will do their work on the right table there. a lot of times so they'll, they'll, everybody's got a dry erase marker and they're they're writing all over the tables and they love it and I don't mind it because they seem to write all over the tables anyway, so it's nice that they have <laughs> nice a table that I, can, it up. that I can erase it off of. What's really nice is that you really can have such a flexible space. Yeah. Like you said, you've got them in the rounds with four, but it's easy 
for you to, to separate that and make it whatever like, reading you need. Yes, it's, it's got it's a Epson bright links projector, sure. which is nice. Yeah. Um, so that that's another great feature. What we're going to do in just a second is we'll take a look at what Mark was saying. He has his his iPad box. Yes, yeah, so my box over here in the corner is just where I store my iPads, lock my iPads up. All right. Well, we'll take a look at that and some other pieces of the space. All right. So here we have. Mark's lovely iPad box. My iPad box. IPad box. Well, uh, as with all the Vanguard members, I was trying to figure out what to buy with uh, my Vanguard money. Well, this is one of the things I bought with my Vanguard money. It is a charging box for my iPads. And if you look inside, oh, I, nice. my three iPads are in here and, and they're charging cables. So the kids, you know, they can just come over. They know to come over and grab an iPad if they, if they need one for whatever. Um, I've loaded, uh, all the iPads are linked to my, I have a Gmail account and a, and a uh, iTunes account through that Gmail, so I'm able to load apps on here through my account. Whatever apps I want, I can put on these uh, iPads. I don't have to go through the technology uh, that you have to go through to get get an app on an iPad card. And how many um, iPads does this hold? This would hold 10 iPads. Okay, so you can charge 10 iPads all at once right. in here, keep it nice and secure. Exactly. That's, that's a great... We are now in another little space that's within this larger space, and Mark, tell us what this space is. This space is being used as, this is kind of where the, uh, it's a teacher space. Uh, the teachers can uh, uh, keep all their, all their stuff in here because the desks that we have out in the open space are just tables. Okay. Really, there isn't a whole lot of place to store. You know, if you need a pen or a pencil, mm -hmm. you don't you don't really have it. We have the printer in here as well. Um, one of the ideas I have for this space is because we're very seldom are we in here. If we could get the storage and and facilitate it so that we could stay in our space, is to use this again as a student space where students can come in and they can work quietly and yes. independently for those students that need a much quieter place almost kind yeah. of like little study carols yes. if you will that it's, you see often you know exactly and we can show and you and i can show you how we have actually study carols just like what you're talking about in one of the other spaces perfect well let's go ahead and take a look at some of those study carols now mark just mentioned that we had some study carols mark tell us a little bit about the study carols this is a this is one of the study carols in, our, in one of our language arts uh, classes the end uh, units on either side have these four study carols in there so you can put two students in here um, to uh, work independently if you need to there there is no door so they still are part of the classroom uh, if you need them to yeah what's really nice is that this entire space has so many different areas for students to work they can yes. work in teams they can work in small groups they can work independently it really allows for all of those different learning styles to be met depending yes. on how the students like to to learn we'll take a look at a couple other spaces before we wrap up our visit at right, right now we are in the last space that we're going to look at today um tell us quickly about this space well this is kind of a conference room i actually use it like if i have a parent conference uh, don't want to be out in the open space so yeah. i'll use this and we can actually close the door and it can be very quiet in here um almost tomb like um, <laughs> but the kids use it as a collaborative space they come in here and they'll work together i've got four chairs and a table set up in here so they use it as a collaborative space and it is nice that you can shut the door like yes. you said because they can talk they can make noise they're not disturbing anybody that's up there. exactly and it's got glass doors so from my desk i could see what's going on in here or even vice versa if somebody yep. needs some extreme quiet they can shut the door that yes. way because i know that you know we some of us can work with noise some of us cannot exactly so it just depends on the day well, thank you so much for visiting us here at Hopewell Middle School. We hope that you have learned something today. If you have some questions about flexible pacing, I think Mark would be a great person for you to contact. Um, and we hope to see you next time.